I said, Praise the Lord. Revival time, miracle time, power time, and it's coming upon your life. What are you? Father, in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you are going to do wonders in every life today. Your promises are yes and amen. And we know that you are going to fulfill your promises. Lord, we pray you open the windows of heaven. Pour down your blessings upon everyone in Jesus' name. Feel every vessel. Touch every life. Heal every sickness. Deliver the oppressed. Do wonders in every life. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Hebrews chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 12. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Hear the Spirit of the Lord through the apostles counseling us, commanding us, directing us, and instructing us that in prayer we should not be slothful. In seeking the face of the Lord, we should not be slothful. We should not be following the path of ease and the path of relaxation. It says we should be up and doing. There's a God in heaven who answers prayer. And it says we must not be slothful in prayer. There is a God in heaven who looks at us as we grip, as we grab, as we take hold of the promises of the Lord. And he says, we should not be laid back, idle, indolent, be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. He says, look at the record, look at the history of the dealings of God with man. And you're going to find there have been men and women of like passions as we are. They held on to the promises of God and they overcame. He said, look at their examples and be followers of them. Those were the people that through faith and through patience inherited the promises. Tonight, we're looking at inheriting the promises by faith. Inheriting the promises by faith. We come to Romans chapter 4, reading from verse 18. Romans chapter 4, verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope. It's giving us record. It's giving us the history. It's giving us the background of men and women that held on to God. And it's challenging you and challenging me, challenging us that we must not be slothful, idle, lazy, cold, lukewarm. We should get up and challenge every problem that we have, even when it appears to be hopeless. Because he gives us examples of those who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not is somebody now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He says, as we come to prayer, and we're expecting a great miracle from the Lord, we should not look at what we can feel, what we can see, or the way we have been, our physical condition, our deplorable condition, our hopeless condition, or whatever might be happening around us. He gives us the example of Abraham. He was not weak in faith. 
He considered not his body dead, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Those of them believe in their hearts, they stagger like drunken people at the promises of God. How can that be? Can that happen? Will that miracle take place? There have been lots of questions. There are no questions tonight. God is going to answer your prayer. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith. Strong in faith. Strong in faith. You'll be strong in faith in Jesus' name. What did he do? As he was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and be fully persuaded. You must be persuaded in your heart. Our God cannot fail. His promises cannot fail. His power cannot fail. And be fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Our God is able tonight. I said your God is able tonight. Able to save. Able to heal able to deliver, able to destroy all the works of the devil. Look at this, verse 22, and therefore it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Verse 23, not now. It was not written for his sake alone, but it was imputed that it was imputed unto him, but for us also. But for me also, but for me also, this example is written for you. The example of Abraham, that as Abraham was strong in faith, tonight you are going to be strong in faith. As he staggered not with unbelief, tonight you will not stagger with unbelief in Jesus' name. He was fully persuaded, and tonight... You are fully persuaded. If there's only one miracle remaining in heaven to dish down to people, you are the candidate, you are going to have it tonight. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. We come to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22. Hebrews 10 verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. You see that? It says tonight as we come to God, as we pray to God, as we claim the promises of God, we draw near with a true heart, with assurance of faith. There's assurance tonight, miracles are going to take place. Assurance tonight is going to do the impossible. Assurance tonight is going to move every mountain. It says in that verse 22, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled, from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast. You have a promise? Let us hold fast. You have expectation? Let us hold fast. You're asking for something in prayer tonight? Let us hold fast. You're believing against hope, having hope? Let us hold fast. You know that this mountain in front of you will move tonight. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. He is faithful that promised. There are so many promises from God. In fact, the promises are as many as the needs of all men. Whatever your needs are tonight, there is a promise that's appropriate for the problem you have. And that promise is coming to your life. And the Lord is going to roll the problems away in Jesus' name. 
the promises as firm as the, as the faithfulness of God. These promises are as fresh as when they were first proclaimed by the Lord because he is eternal, because it's always there. And whatever you said before, in a fresh way, in a new way, is still saying the same thing today. The promises of God that we're going to read tonight. And every promise of the word of God that you read, they are always as fixed, always as fresh, always as dependable as when God made them for the first time. There is no possibility of failure. In your life, there's no possibility of failure tonight. In your family, there's no possibility of failure tonight. Why? Number one, because God is faithful. He does not forget. He cannot forget. He cannot fail. Once he pronounces something and he says, this will be, he does not forget. All the promises we're reading tonight, God cannot forget. God is faithful. Number two, God is mighty. There is nothing he said he will do, which he now turns around and he says, well, I'm sorry, I don't think I can do that. I don't have the might. I don't have the power. Never. Because God is mighty. He's mightier than all contrary forces. Any other force in your life? Any other thing in your life that fights against the fulfillment of the promise of God, the mighty God will crush them tonight from your life. <laughs> Number three, God is immutable, unchangeable. It's always there. Nothing moves him. He is immovable. And because of that, he cannot change. He will not change. Nothing will change the utterance or the proclamation or the pronouncement he has given out. Number four, it's immutable. Immutable. There is nothing. Number three, immutable. Number four, is eternal. All earthly things are temporal and temporary. Everything you are going through, all the challenges you are going through, that just for a moment, and in a few minutes, everything will be cancelled out of your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Number five, God is omnipresent. He's there with you. He's there by your side. And you cannot say, I'm looking for him. Nothing escapes his notice. He notices you there. He sees you there. He sees the problem there. He knows the magnitude of the problem. And he knows how long the problem has been. He is omnipresent. Not only that, he's omniscient. He knows the solution to your problem. And he's bringing that solution tonight. I said he's bringing that solution tonight. He will not come late. It's going to be on time. And tonight, the moment you mention the name of Jesus, it is done in Jesus' name. <laughs> Number seven is omnipotent. None like him in power. None like him in authority. Whatever you say they will do, he will do. And tonight is that night. Tonight is my night. I said tonight is my night. Whatever needs to be shaken out of your life, tonight is done. Whatever needs to be moved out of your life, tonight it is done. Whatever needs to be impacted into your life, tonight it is done. You're going to inherit the promises by faith tonight. It will happen in Jesus' name. Three points we're looking at. Number one, the promise of total freedom is salvation. The promise of total freedom is salvation. You get saved and quite a lot of things come along with that salvation. Total freedom. Every yoke cancelled. Every cause cancelled. 
every rope and every chain that ties you and binds you, everything broken. Total freedom tonight. For me. I said for me. Total freedom is salvation. Number two, the provision of fruitfulness for all saints. The provision of fruitfulness, you are going to be fruitful. Your family, you are going to be fruitful. In the work of your hand, you are going to be fruitful. In your profession, you are going to be fruitful. In soul winning, you are going to be fruitful. Every form of barrenness, spiritual, barrenness, physical, barrenness, finance, barrenness, food to eat, barrenness, joblessness. Every form of barrenness is taken away from your life in Jesus' name. The provision of fruitfulness for all saints. Number three, the prophecy of fullness with the Spirit. The prophecy of fullness with the Spirit. Come to number one. What do you have in number one? What's your possession in number one? What's the expectation from number one? The promise of total freedom is salvation. The freedom we're talking about has three branches. Number one, freedom from all sins. Freedom from all sins. The devil thought he could keep you in that sin. The devil has failed. Number two, freedom from all sicknesses. Every form of sickness is canceled tonight. Anything you have been carrying in your body and you have been trying to shake it up, get it up, tonight it's going. Freedom from all sicknesses. Number three, freedom from all afflictions of Satan. Congratulations, you are free. Look at John, number one, freedom from all sins. You are free. I said you are free. John chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Hey, can, can you see that? Do you understand that verse? Look at that verse again. As he spake these words, many believed on him. What does that mean? Look at it. It's not after he spoke these words. No. When he finished speaking these words. No. As he spoke, the message was still going on. In their heart, they believed. While the message is going on tonight, and you are telling yourself, I believe that. I believe that. I said I believe that. The work will begin. I believe that the miracle will begin. I believe that those blind eyes will be getting open. I believe that strength will come to a weak body. Look at that verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews, we believed on him. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. You are going to continue. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Ye shall know the truth. And the truth will do what? Make you free. Look up here for a moment. You see, people are thinking of my strength will make me free. My energy will make me free. My struggling will make me free. My endeavor will make me free. They're looking for something coming from the inside of them to make them free. The truth is coming from Christ. And the truth is coming from outside. It's not what you feel. 
It's not what you're seeing. It is not your struggle. It is not your power. The truth you are hearing will set you free. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Verse 36, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Thank God your freedom has come. Yeah. Romans chapter 6, verse 7. Romans Chapter 6, verse 7. For he that is dead is freed from sin. What does that mean? He that is dead, they say, but I'm still alive. You need to understand. When Christ was crucified, it was for you. When Christ died, it was for you. When he was buried, it was for you. And when he rose from the dead, that was for me. And he says, you are identified with Christ. Come to the side of Christ. He was crucified for me. He died for me. He was buried for me. He rose again for me. I am dead with him. My old nature is dead with him. And he says, look at the consequence of that. For he that is dead is free from sin. Am I free tonight? I'm talking about you. I said, am I free tonight? Are you free tonight? Thank God you're free. Every chain of sin that bound you, you're free in Jesus' name. Look at verse 18. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Look at verse 22. But now, but now, today, today. But now, I said today, today. Be made free from sin, ye became the servants of God. Number one, we're free from all sins. I am free. Number two, we're free from all sicknesses. Free from all sicknesses. Look up here. When something is attached to you, and is following you about, and is tied to you, and you feel the heavy weight, all of a sudden, somebody comes, and it breaks the cord, the association, the affiliation, and takes away that thing from you, the load is gone. You'll feel light. You'll feel free. And that is what Christ has come to do against your sickness tonight. You've been dragging it about. You've been pulling it about. And you have been saying, oh, wretched man that I am, oh, wretched woman that I am, this sin is going to kill me. No, this thing cannot kill you. You've come to the presence of Christ. And you have come to the very foot of Calvary. You are free from all sicknesses tonight in Jesus' name. It's been there for years. You're free. You've been trying to tolerate it. You're free. You've been trying to endure it. You're free. Look at Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. And when the evening was come, like tonight, this is your evening. Evening of miracle. Evening of deliverance. Evening of freedom. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed how many people? Are you in that number? And he healed, I said, how many people? Your name is there. And he healed all that was sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet himself, not an angel, 
himself, not a man, himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. He'll carry them away. Matthew chapter 10, Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. In verse 1, and when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal what? All manner of sickness and what? All manner of disease. And he said in verse 8, heal the sick. And if you're if you are there tonight, you're sick. It's not, it's not you that is going to say, I'm not strong enough. Oh, you, you will be healed tonight. I don't know what I'm going to do. You're going to be healed tonight. He gave the command. He gave the commission. Heal the sick. And he gave his name. And when we mention that name tonight, your sicknesses are gone. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely ye have received. I was waiting for you. Freely give. Are you going to pay something for the healing tonight? You are going to fast before you get the healing tonight? You are going to roll on the ground before you get the healing tonight? You need to buy some bottle of oil before you get the healing tonight? Free. Is coming your way. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. And this sign shall follow them that believe. Are there believers there tonight? I said that there are believers there tonight. These signs will follow you. Healing will follow you. Deliverance will follow you. Prosperity will follow you. Answer to prayer will follow you. You will not be searching and looking. Where is my healing? Where is my healing? Don't worry. It will just follow after you. The signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Turn to the person by your side and say, you will recover tonight. Turn to the other side, you recover tonight. Look back there, look back there. You recover tonight. Recovery has come. Healing has come. Miracle has come. Congratulations, I rejoice with you. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Look at verse 20. And they went forth and they preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word was signs following. There is an amen in your life. Amen in your family. It is done in Jesus' name. And there is, a, there is a freedom from all afflictions of Satan. Look at Luke. Luke chapter 10. We're talking about the third part now. Freedom from all the afflictions of Satan. Look at chapter 10 of Luke. And I'm reading from verse 17. And the 70 returned again of joy. Every wife will return again with joy tonight. Every husband return again with joy tonight. Every boy, every girl, you are returning back home with joy tonight. And all those who have said, I never got anything before tonight is different. I said, tonight is different. You will return with joy. Joy of answered prayer. Joy of testimony. Joy of victory. Joy of freedom. I am free. I said, I am free. 
verse 17, and the 17 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Before you, Satan will fall. All messengers of Satan will fall. All those who terrorize you and they say, you will not pass this way. They will fall, you will pass that way. Verse 19, behold, I give unto you power. What do you have tonight? Weakness? Sorrow? Shame? Defeat? What do you have tonight? Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over and over and over all the power of your enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Is that yours? Is it real tonight? Are you going to get it tonight? You're free. Romans chapter 16. Reading from verse 20. Romans chapter 16, verse 20. Romans chapter 16, I'm waiting for you. Chapter 16, verse 20. Mark this in your Bible. This promise is for you. In the day, it's for you. In the night, it's for you. In the city, it's for you. In the village, it's for you. And when anybody, any power threatens you, come back to this verse, you will see the victory. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under whose feet? Under your feet next year, next five years, when it says and the God of peace the God of power the God of promise the God of all might the God of majesty the God of dominion the God of deliverance the God that never fails and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. It is done. Point number two. The provision of fruitfulness for all saints. For how many saints? Are you part of that? Where are you? I rejoice with you. You will never know failure in your life. All the past defeat and crying and weeping, they are gone forever in Jesus' name. The provision of fruitfulness. You will be fruitful. Your studies will be profitable. Everything you lay your hand upon will prosper in Jesus' name. Fruitfulness. Somebody help me shout fruitfulness. Three things here. Number one, no more barrenness. Did you hear that? No more barrenness. Number two, no more backwardness. You know, I'm always, I'm always coming last. Uh -uh. You are now coming to the head of the queue. Backwardness cancelled in Jesus' name. Number three, no more bitterness. Bitter experience. Crying. Sorrowful. Dejected. Wanting to commit suicide. All that is taken away. Your future is bright. 
I'm looking for the person I'm talking to. I said your future is bright. One, no more barrenness. Two, no more backwardness. Three, no more bitterness. Number one, this is you. Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23. Look at verse 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to thine enemies and an adversary to thine adversaries. 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee, and there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. Any loved one close to your heart, no barrenness in Jesus' name. And the person you have the name on your prayer list. And they say, Mother in the Lord, pray for me. Daddy in the Lord, pray for me. My brother, pray for me. All those people that requested prayer from you, from this very moment, barrenness is cancelled away from them. They will not be barren in thy land. And the number of thy days I will fulfill. Somebody there is going to live long. Nothing will cut short your life. Long life. Long life. Long life. Everything that cuts short somebody's life will not even come near you. You will not be barren in Jesus' name. Psalm 113. Psalm 113. And I'm reading from verse 6. 113. Reading from verse 6. Who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven, and in the earth he raiseth up the poor out of the dust. He has lifted you up. And lifted the needy out of the dunk hill, that he may search him with princes, even with the princes of the people. Verse 9 He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother. Of children, praise the Lord. Number one, no more barrenness. Wipe those tears away. Number two, no more backwardness. Failure is cancelled. Defeat is cancelled. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, it has come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God, you see your God? will set thee on high. Did you receive that? It is fulfilled. You come from the lower bottom of the queue and you come to the front of the queue. God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Look at this in verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee. 
in thy storehouses. And in all that thou settest thy hand unto, every exam you take, you will pass. Every endeavor that you attempt, you'll be successful. Every plan you make is going to come through very well. Any project you start, you will finish. He says, in all that thou settest thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself. As he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways, and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, they shall be afraid of you. Evil powers will be afraid of you. Those who are hiding in darkness, when they mention your name, they will tremble. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. The heaven to give the rain unto thy land in a season. And to bless, and to bless, no subtraction, and to bless, no removal, and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Look at verse 13. I need to breathe down deep before I read verse 13 to you. You need to look at it very well before we look at verse 13. Look at this, look at this. And the Lord shall make thee the hedge. And not the tail. And thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath. If thou shalt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command you this day. Number one, no barrenness. Amen. Number two, no backwardness. Look at third John. Third John. Almost the end of the New Testament. Third John. Only one chapter. Verse two. Beloved, is the beloved in the house tonight? Beloved, I say, is the beloved of heaven? Is she there tonight? Is she there tonight? Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. It is done. My brother, it is done. My sister there, it is done. Yeah. Number one, no more barrenness. You accept that. No more backwardness. You accept that. Number three, no more bitterness. We're looking at Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. And I'm reading from verse 23. Exodus chapter 15. Verse 23, and when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. That's a tree at Calvary. That's where Jesus died for you. And he died to change every situation in your life. 
every bitter situation in your life will become sweet from tonight in Jesus' name. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance. And there he brought them and said, If thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that he lets thee. Bitterness is gone. Sorrow is gone. Defeat is gone. Crying is gone. All your tears are wiped away in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31. I'll start with verse 15. And then I'll back up to some verses. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 15. Thus says the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah. Lamentation and bitter weeping, bitterness. Rachel, weeping for children, refused to be comforted for children because they were not. That's a bitter water of experience. But now come to verse 11. The Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Any sin stronger than yourself that are be holding you down, making your life bitter, they are knocked off tonight. Look at verse 14. And I will satiate the soul of the priest of fatness. Walkers who are here tonight, a special fullness of blessing upon your life. And my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. Look at verse 16. Thus says the Lord, refrain thy voice from weeping, and thine eyes from tears, for thy work shall be rewarded. Your labor shall be rewarded. Your endeavor shall be rewarded. Your aspirations will be rewarded, says the Lord. And they shall come from the land of the enemy. You release your blessings that they're sitting on. Your right they're sitting on will be released unto you. And there is hope in thine end. Things will not end with bitterness, will not end with tears, will not end with sorrow. There is hope in thine end, says the Lord, that thy children shall come again to thine own border. Look at verse 20. Look at verse 20. Is Ephraim, my dear son, is he a pleasant child? For since I speak against him, I do honestly remember him still. God remembers you. He remembers your tears. Even if he had corrected you and rebuked you, he said, since I speak against him, I do honestly remember him still. Therefore, my powers are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him. Mercy has come for you. Fruitfulness in your life, in Jesus' name. Point number three, the prophecy of fullness with the Spirit. The prophecy of fullness with the Spirit. Look at the prophecy. We're looking at Joel. In Joel chapter 2. 
Joel chapter 2. Reading from verse 12. Therefore, also now, says the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Multiply grace coming to you tonight. Manifold mercy coming to you tonight. Slow to anger and of great kindness and